for those who are not familiar with data visualization, I'll briefly walk through, and maybe I'll move the little camera thing. I'll briefly walk through the data visualization process and uh, tell you a little bit about how you would get started in case you wanted to visualize some data. So number one, I think always start with the context, right? Determine who the audience of your data visualization, who's the recipient, right, would be, and what are the questions that you would like to answer? So possible questions could be, um, you know, number of COVID cases, it could be your amount of sales or how well your marketing um, tactics are doing. That's setting the context. And then who's going to actually look at your data visualization? Where is this piece going? Where is it going to sit? Where is this going to live? Next part is the data. So obtaining the data and identifying any necessary data fields. So in the case of trying to understand how your sales are doing, you obviously need, you know, sales data, right? What are the dollars that are coming in on a daily basis that you can visualize? Method. So this is a very, very important part. This is basically determining the most effective, the most efficient way to represent the information or that data that you've uncovered. And this is all about selecting the right chart if you even need a chart. And this is, I'll, I'll get into that in the next slide in terms of how do we select the right chart and how do we know what's the right chart? I think that's, that's one of the um, mistakes that a lot of people make when they're starting out with data visualization because there's, there's not a clear guidebook that comes along with every single piece of software, or if there is, we tend to ignore it because it's easier to just get in there and start building. Do you think, do you think, let me, let me just ask you a question about that. Do you think yeah. that there is a, a, uh, <clears throat> a common approach to, so, cause, cause if I think in terms of data visualization, like from my perspective, so like you say, you could, you can look at it from, you know, with sales, sales numbers, and uh, oh, and by the way, you said to me, I, I, I made some comment about isn't data just another word for numbers? And you said no. Yes. So before the session, you said data is just numbers. And I said no, because data could actually be sensor data from your heating devices. It could be um, Yelp reviews could be data. So it's not always numbers. Oh, right. And that, that, that was the point I was trying to make. And I think we're quickly moving to towards a direction where we have natural language processing in place that can actually read text, quantify things, and make and develop design data visualizations that could tell you a story about, you know, sometimes it's just words, it's just reviews, or it's just stars on Amazon. That's data as well. Yeah, no, that's a good that's a good point about the Yelp reviews and about, you know, like like uh, you know, like you say, like like Amazon uh, reviews. I mean, while it's great, you know, to read that somebody gives gives you a five star or something, uh, but what what did they say? Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, so would you say that like like those when, when I see something like a cloud of numbers, I mean, a cloud of words, right? What do they call that? You know, a word cloud. It's called a word cloud. <laughs> yes, it really is. I am. I am not a data guy uh, uh, that. Uh, uh, yeah, because though that's data. Right. So so a word cloud is a way of presenting data. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. OK, so do you think that there are uh, and you're probably going to get it, get more into this about uh, like you see on TV, like right now, you know, we got the elect, you know, the election is go is, you know, the campaign is going on right now. And we're going to we're going to see on CNN and, and Fox and all these other MSNBC. And they're going to have all kinds of data. Yes. Right. Uh, do you think do you, do you think that uh, uh, it's getting easier to understand? Uh, um, you know, like like for me, I don't think it's easier to understand data because there's more data. Uh, yeah, I think it's not necessarily more data. I think um, people are getting creative in how they visualize data. And that goes back to my first part of be making things simple, right? Mm -hmm. And I think we're at the point now, and this, this is not a, a new thing, but people can lie with data, right? There's a book called Charts Lie or How to Lie with Statistics. And there's just so many ways to use different charts and graphs that can either in inform your audience or mislead your audience, right? And in some cases, it could be even... Um, put out there as if this was unintentional. In some cases, it's clear that it was intentional. Um, but yeah, there are definitely some visual best practices to follow when you're building data uh, visualizations, but also you, uh, you know, as an audience of a TV show, there are some questions you can ask, um, like what colors are they using to, you know, um, show the good and the bad, right? In some cases, uh, it's, you know, talking about elections, you might put the person that you don't want elected in, in red, all, all the data about that person in red. And it kind of, it's like a subliminal messaging to your TV. Yeah, because they're using psychology just in the color. Yep, absolutely. There's color, there, there are other ways to lie with, with data. Like if you're looking at a bar chart, and this is a, a pretty interesting example, I don't have the visual here, but 
um, showing how, let's say, the education system has improved during, you know, XYZ's presidency. And there's a bar chart that shows that it improved, let's say, 10%. Um, but if you were to remove the axes, the y-axis, you can make that 10% look like a huge jump, or you can make it look like a tiny jump. So mm -hmm. you can play with the, the way you represent your data to um, basically show, push your agenda, which is something I highly advise against, I think. Keep it simple, show what the data is showing, and let people decide on their own. Hmm. Okay. All right, I interrupted you, so go ahead. No, no, it's fine. So, yep, step four was to visualize. This is my favorite part. This is basically using visual best practices, such as, you know, the proper use of a title, use of color, labels, formatting. There's so many things that we can get into, and I know we only have the hour, but I could spend days talking about just the formatting side of things. And then eventually we get into... Step five, which is communicating. So communicating with your stakeholders and incorporating feedback, um, meaning if you've designed this data visualization, like a management report or something, you can submit that to the, your key stakeholders or the management team. And then the last kind of step I have in there is the fact that this is an iterative process. So once you communicate your data visualization, your stakeholders might have updates. They might want to see another filter or, hey, can I also see this type of chart or can I also see this kind of data or drill down? Then you go back to the visualize step and then you go, you know, communicate it again. And eventually, hopefully for your sake, that process ends and you hand over that um, the dashboard of data visualization. But sometimes it, it keeps on going, depending on depending on the project. Mm -hmm. Now I know that you, you said you don't have a ton of, ton of slides, but uh, would we be able to share these with the people? Yeah, we can share these. 